Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and we are going to be talking about staff this week. So, um, techs, crew chiefs, office goddesses, everything you need to know about staff. But first, let's do some quick shout outs. So, if you are new to this podcast, thanks for checking us out. Um, we are available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play. And uh, YouTube is where we have our conversation, so check it out. We're in the 70s. you got a ton to go back and listen to. Hopefully it doesn't suck, and hopefully you want to check it out a little bit more. And if you are one of the elite, one of the cool kids, the cool kids, if you're part of the nation and you watch or listen to every podcast, you comment on everything, you thumbs up our YouTube video, and more importantly, you buy your supplies directly through me, shameless plug, then what's going on? It is because of you that I get to have brand name ice cream. Uh, I don't know. I'm running out of ideas, but thank you guys. No, really, uh, if you buy through me, I really appreciate it. It's like a virtual high five. I got so many of you who just like text me and be like, yo, everything's in the cart. Put it order in. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if you want to buy your supplies from me, it's 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone. So go ahead, text it, call it, whatever you want. A couple of shout outs today. Uh, Jake Walker. One of the cool kids. What's going on, man? Uh, Travis, what is going on? Uh, Neil Oster, what is up? And Sebastian Levescu. Tell me if I butchered your name. I'm sorry. If I did, it uh, went south pretty quick. This dude, uh, Sebastian, is, is, is awesome. He sends me ideas all the time for show. For shows, uh, if you have ideas to comment on YouTube or shoot it to me either at my uh, email, josh at window cleaning resource, shoot it to me as a text, 862-312-2026, or Facebook message me like he does. So either way, uh, what's going on, guys? So this week, that is what we're talking about is staff. And by the way, uh, somebody commented on my intros, sucking there's a lot of stuff I try to get out, so I'm sorry. If it's if that if that was too long and boring, I'm sorry. But I'm trying to shorten them up for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But anyway, talking about staff. Now, here's the thing. You, you may not be to the point that you want staff or think you need staff or think you'll ever even have staff. Maybe you'll be uh, kind of an owner-operator and uh, work all, keep all, or whatever the saying is. That is awesome. That does des- definitely... Uh, no wrong way to do this whole kind of uh, business venture that we're on. But this still may be a great podcast for you to listen to because it might get you an understanding if you do ever want to go that way or you think, well, maybe it sounds kind of intriguing. So, but talking about staff, I'm going to tell you right now, if you have staff, you get it for sure. If you don't have staff, you're not going to quite understand because this was told to me and I was like, ah, but it'll be different with me. But having staff sucks. It is the worst part of your company. Now, don't get me wrong. I had amazing people I surrounded myself with. Amazing. Um, I mean, awesome people. But you also get a lot of crap. You get a lot of turnaround sometimes. Um, You have to search people out and find out they don't give two dumps about your company. And it's hard. It really, really sucks. Everybody always says, like, does it get easier? No, because you just have more staff to deal with. Eventually, the only part that gets easier is when you bring another staff member on that's human resource and they have to deal with the staff. And it takes that kind of thing off of your, you know, plate. But that's the only time when it sucks a little bit less and it still sucks. It's very, very hard. Listen, your business is your baby, right? You started it from nothing. You watched it grow. You you had to feed it everything, and if you, if if you didn't go get the jobs in the beginning, it would die because it relied solely on you going out there and getting everything for it. It was very fragile, and at any time, this this baby could have died. But you kept it strong. Now it's a toddler. You know, it does some things on its own, but it still needs a lot of help. It needs you to make sure that it's going on the right path and choosing and making the right decisions and going. And now all of a sudden it gets into a high schooler. Well, now it's starting to be a little bit more dependent. You're kind of like, oh, I'm getting a little bit tired of this, right? <laughs> Seven year itch there in, in business. Uh, but it does its own thing. It's bringing in its own money. It kind of the ball is rolling. It's very hard. And eventually, 
if you get to this point and you end up selling it or retiring or whatever, you're watching this baby of yours go off to college, right? Or get married. Now all of a sudden, it's with someone else. They're going to take great care of it, but it's not you. Like, it's still, you know, you have this huge connection even though somebody else has it. Your business is a baby. It is a child of yours, right? That's the connection. You just hired Joe Smith. Sorry if your name's Joe Smith. (laughs) You just hired Joe Smith. Guess what? You're the guy that signs the paychecks. That's it. That's all that matters. Because of you, he can, you know, maybe buy some McDonald's and beer or whatever, right? Yes, there's people in there who have families, and that's not what I'm talking about. But I support families and I change lives. You do. It is because of you that all your staff and their families can do what they need to do. Like, it's because of you, people live an existence. That's pretty amazing. It still sucks because those people, they're not going to care about your business like you. They just aren't. And that is the biggest hurdle in staffing that anybody has to get over is that they're not going to care like you. I've heard it. I've read it. I've seen it. People say, "Ah, I just got to find that one guy who cares about my business as much as I do. Well, you should stop looking because there is not anybody who will care about it the way that you did because not... Not only if you brought a partner on, that was 50-50, you guys both have the same amount of vested interest in this. He's coming into a business that exists. He's not coming into a business that he saw it as a baby. He wasn't there making sure that it ate so it didn't die or didn't freeze in the winter, right? You did. So no one is ever going to be connected to your business like you, ever. Get that out of your head right now. What you're going to have is the potential to have people who are really good care about the job, care about your business, and want it to do good. They want to do good. There's people out there. 100% there is. I had amazing staff. I had really bad staff also. Um, And that is the struggle. It's the struggle. It's, it's, It's catching fish that's hiring, right? You have this big trolling net out, and you catch a lot of crap, right? You're catching octopuses and octopies, octopies whatever lots of octopuses you're catching seals and sharks and dolphins you're trying to catch mackerel or tuna or whatever this is the worst analogy ever (laughs) right you're gonna have to throw a bunch of it back to find the stuff that you actually want that is what you do why you see shrimpers with two nets big nets and they troll and they want to get they gotta get all this stuff and they pick out all the crap and throw it back that is what you're doing absolutely what you're doing now, not, not even are the fish that you catch, you want to catch one, maybe it's too small. It's not regulation size, it just isn't ready yet, right? You got to throw it back. So hiring, the ABH, not ABS, everybody's heard that, always be selling. Great theory, but there's another one if you have staff, and it's always be hiring. And this one is, is very interesting kind of in the staff side of it. But if you're not always looking for the new fish or always trolling, you can't find... Because for every 10 people that you have, one of them may be good. Like That is a true statistic. And one of them might even be decent. Like Some of us have had people who are just decent. I've had people who are just decent enough to stay around. Like They kind of care enough to like not light the place on fire, but they're not awesome. And I didn't want to go through the headaches of having to hire more people, so I kind of put up with a lot of the crap. Like You have to do the juggle. Like... You'll have great people, you'll have some decent people, and you'll have more than that in garbage people. Now, where you find staff sometimes can change what and how and who you're hiring. If you're always going through Craigslist as a free service, awesome, which is free in most places. Some places are actually starting to charge now for business listings. Um, I think it's like 20 bucks. Still worth it, but when you are in an area like craigslist craigslist is for anyone because it's free and un um unbiased but it's just anybody the doors are open so you're gonna get everybody who does the click uh their resume sends it to everybody and hiring off craigslist is the ultimate of nets but you're fishing in dirty water if that makes sense and i found actually two of my best employees ever off of Craigslist. So it definitely happens. There's good people out there. But here's what you do. Um, I write down uh, on there, in the very end um, sentence, 
I write with big stars, bold letters, and everything. After my whole little blah, blah, blah. I write, in the subject line, write, I am a rock star. Or, I will instantly delete your your um, reply. People are like, well, that's kind of an a-hole thing to do. But it's not. Here's what it is. Obviously, if someone is applying for... If you, right now, listening or watching to this, wanted to apply for a job, you would show up nicely dressed, right? If you're applying for that type of job. You would be on time, clean. You would do everything you can to impress the person because you want a job. You may want a job. You may need a job. So when you're reading this and somebody sees that, if they don't put that, they haven't read the whole thing. First off, you're finding out that they can't read and follow directions, which is huge. That's huge. It doesn't matter what one of these you know, parts of your staff you're hiring for. That's huge. You can't read and understand directions. But two, you catch those people who are also trolling, just throwing out the resume to everybody. You got no experience in this. You don't ever want to work outside nor need have worked outside in the past, but yet you want to work as a window cleaner. You just sent your resume off to everybody. Hello, my name is fill in the blank. I am happy to be applying for this job. Please consider me in your future hirings. Here's my resume. I don't ever want those people because I want you to know what you're getting into and care. If you didn't care enough to, to read the thing, I, I, don't, I don't want you. Like There's enough people out there to just get people in. So I'm going to write that little line. That right there saves you a ton because you'll get, say you get 10, well, depending on your area, you could get less than this. Now, staff hiring is even hard. But uh, say you get 10 of them, you know, eight of them may say that, two of them may not have anything. They'll just say, my resume for your consideration, delete. There, first screening process, done and over with. Then what we do when we get those people in, and that's everything that we do, even job boards and things like that. I post that because it's the same thing where people can kind of scroll. A lot more people in Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, Craigslist, um, are just scrolling for stuff. It's free, right? If you go with an Indeed or a Monster or something like that, it's different because there's pay. You as a business are getting kind of filtered through, right? Like if Craigslist charges 25 bucks for you to do a listing, that's good news for you. Everybody's like, well, I don't want to pay. Yes, but you see everybody who's in their listing has paid. So it instantly cuts the number of like jobs in half. It overqualifies now jobs. So instead of these people who are just looking for anything, you get lost in the shuffle. Now you're starting to kind of float up because there's less people in there. Same thing with jobs, uh, monster.com, jobs.com, uh, uh, all, all the kind of job services. Put something in there that differentiates them and make sure that they read it. That's the first way that you kind of check that's the first bit of net then i have people come in right when they come in i'm going to set up an appointment if i got eight people left out of those 10 i'm going to set up an appointment with every one of them i'm going to call them just in a row hey this is jersey calling from xyz i've just got your resume i just wanted to ask a couple quick questions if you got a second everybody always says yeah definitely yeah okay great have you ever worked outside uh are you scared of heights you know do you have a problem with heat or cold Blah, blah, blah. Asking just general, dumb, very light questions to see how they answer. Because if you ask a question like, um, are you scared of heights? And they go, uh, well, like, um, you know, um, one time, like, well, I guess no, you know, but like, I would, and they're just like, that's how they're talking. You're going, okay, well, I get what kind of person. I can see it. I can understand. You've, you've filtered it out. If they're punctual and they are able to talk and that type of thing you get kind of a vibe on people right away so from there you invite them in for an interview after you're done talking well great man i just want to ask you a couple quick questions uh we're doing these interviews now in person uh here's my address are you able to come on tuesday at 10 a.m uh yeah i know that's fine set it up for tuesday at 10 a.m the next job interview you're going to do at 10 15 every 15 minutes well that's not enough time no, it's not really enough time, but here's what you're doing. N out of those eight people, again, comment if you're getting different getting different results in this, but out of those eight people that all talk to you, you gave every one of them interviews, two of them will show up to the interview. You're laughing right now, right? You're like, what? No, God. Yes, I'm telling you. I am telling you. Through your vetting process, two, now you're two of ten, will show up, and that's... I've had times where the entire day didn't show up. 
multiple times. Like this is not just me throwing numbers out. Ask anybody who does uh, hiring, they'll tell you. So now you got two. Out of those two people, one person's going to maybe be late or not show up or, you know, get dropped off by somebody. And that's one question I always ask and put in the things. You have to have your own driver's license. Like if something happened with you getting a DUI, that sucks. But we are a mobile contract cleaning company. You need to drive. Like you need to have that option. I put it out there as this is one of the requirements. Um, Now, check into legalities and what you can and can't hire and fire people for, depending on how you're hiring or firing. But again, I hire through temps, and I'll touch on that in just a second. But when they come in, now you're doing the interview, you're getting a vibe for them. If they suck and they showed up with, you know, a big uh, pot leaf on their shirt and face tattoos, which if you like pot leaf shirts and you have face tattoos, I am not hating on you. I'm just telling you that you are not the type of person that I may have hired at my company. No harm, no foul just didn't work out right but i'm not going to tell people that because in that whole process there's no reason to let them kind of know they just moved on to the next process don't ever turn a candidate away because you know what if i don't get anybody else and i need people that may be somebody that i fall into unless i have a strict policy on that face tattoos and things i had a strict policy that i didn't want that um because of our clientele it just it wasn't a good fit for us but um, again, this is all stuff you'd kind of put in as your requirements to kind of weed it out at the beginning. If it was somebody who I was like, oh gosh, you're just you're not really there as far as my upper uh, kind of what I want. Um, I'm still going to send you into a one day of work. So what I do is everybody that comes into the interview, that's even worth a darn. I'm going to say, hey, so how we do now is you're to the next process. We're just going to have you come in for one day. Show us what you got. Hang out with our crew. We'll work for one day. I'll pay you cash at the end of the day. Now, uh, before you go all crazy on that, look at law statutes. You have to make under a certain dollar amount as a subcontractor for them in order to be able to pay cash. You've never really been hired on. There's legalities on it. Just check into it. But we'd have them come in for one day. And um, after that time, they would um, be... Uh, given a shot. Okay, great. Now we're going to have you come in. Uh, You know, you did great the first day. They leave for that day. We're going to call you. That's how we'd always do it. I'd sit down with that crew that they went out with. Like, hey, how was he? I was good. You know, tell me everything. I want to know five bad things, five good things, or three good things, three bad things, whatever. And you get to kind of know from them. And then my operations officer would be the guy who would tell me yes or no. And then like, yes, I have him come back in. So after that process, they were then brought on for two weeks. Now those two weeks is like, hey, like we're going to find out in two weeks if it's a good fit for you or if it's a good fit for us. Obviously, if this job sucks and you don't like it, there's no benefit for me to keep you around because you're not going to be giving me 100% and you're going to hate life. So we don't want to be locked into this big contract where you feel like you're stuck at this job that you don't think you like. And we're not going to be in this that we know it doesn't work out for us either, that we're either of us are stuck in it. So it goes out on the table. People really like that. Like, okay, great. Well, this is cool. I, I know I'm going to like it. Well, cool. This is your opportunity. Let's just see kind of how it goes. They come in and we get the everything set up for them, whatever. They work for that two weeks and you know in two weeks, Yes, you're here. No, you're not. If they are still hired after two weeks and we go, dude, you're awesome. By now, two weeks of knowing them, they've played ping pong with me because I got a ping pong table at the shop and uh, everything else, like things mend. They're building kind of a rapport with the guys. They're doing great. We have kind of a little baby party on that day and just like go out to, uh, we had some clients that we had done some barter for food. So we'd always go out there, but it'd be Friday, like come out cool man you're on you know high five be good like cool that's how we hired people and this is for every position except office staff because office staff was not yeah it's office staff like i don't want to dumb down that position but you didn't need to see how they worked well with the crew you could see how they worked well doing the things that you asked them to do and that was kind of its own thing that's our hiring process in one more time, on the temp side of things, when a staff member would come to us, at that point, I would call up our temp agency and say, hey, guy's name was Tim. Say, hey, Tim, I got a new one uh, starting on Monday. He'd be like, great, I'll be there at not Like, our times, he would be there at 8.30, I think, because the guys came in at 8.30 and then they left the shop at 9 after everything got ready. 8.30, they had to be to work. 
Cool. That's awesome, man. We'll see them. So he'd come in, they do the paperwork, get everything ready, and I would hire my people through that temp agency. The reason is they cover workers' comp, all the taxes and payrolls and legality side of things. They took care of all that. And on top of that, they had the workers' comp, which is extremely expensive until you get somebody to drop into a temp agency like that, which they are still your employees. I found them, I vetted them, and I hired them. They just happen to be getting employed uh, and paid through an agency. You can keep them forever that way. It's not like they're a temp and you have to have them for six months and then do something different. You can run them that way forever because you're paying them as that. Uh, the other nice thing for an employee is that they're never technically out of work. If you decide, hey, we're slow and they're going into seasonal unemployment, which you can still do through a temp agency, but say you don't need them. Say they farted in your office and you just don't want them around. I could call them and be like, dude, he just is not working out. They would take them the next day and say, hey, John Smith, you just, uh, it just, it just isn't a good fit here. Man, I appreciate it, but I already let the uh, temp agency know and they'll be calling you, right? No one wants to fire people, but if you don't even want to fire them when they leave, if you want to take the uh, wussy way out, uh, for a lack of better term, like you could just call them and then they would call them and fire them for you. I wouldn't do that. That's not, that's not cool. But after letting them know, then the temp agency says, okay, uh, this job at XYZ is no longer available for you, but we do have opportunities in machinery or packaging or something else. Uh, you can still start Monday. So they have other opportunities where they don't necessarily have to be out of work because there's not anything worse than being out of work when you need it, obviously. But there's a lot of things that free you up. Go back and watch um, our episode on hiring. It talks all about that. I won't touch too much into that. But here's the staffing positions that we hired for. First off, we had a tech. A tech to us was somebody who did work, always did the uh, work, uh, window cleaning, pressure washing, whatever stuff that they're actually doing. They were a tech. They were the second person on a crew of two. The first person was the crew chief. So the tech's job was to basically do uh, just the work and not talk to the people. Now, we wanted everybody to be super nice on our crew. Like, you got to be friendly, you know. But the tech was usually always the guy on the outside who didn't talk to anybody, got everything ready. He didn't go to the door. He didn't give him the paperwork. He didn't do any of that. But because of that, he had less responsibility. He actually got paid a little bit less. So you had a crew of people not making the exact same amount of money. In that same crew of the tech and crew chief, you had obviously the crew chief. Now, for us, the crew chief is a fancy, super, you know, military term, I guess, to make you sound like you are the chief, you are the head of that crew. And that's exactly what it was. Whenever I had reports given to me, it was by that person. The tech never gave me reports. That just wasn't their job. They didn't need to do that. But the crew chief was the one who went to the customer's door and said, hey, I'm Jersey with XYZ. Gave the spiel, handed the paperwork, make sure they were happy. At the end, collected all the paperwork and then made sure that them and the tech went and did their five up, five downs. They were just the ones that kind of make everything go smoothly on that crew. Because you have, you can't have two people in a position uh, that are the same because no one is going to understand what their job is, right? You just It's not that way. So you got to have a differentiator. So that crew chief was also the firefighter for that crew, right? If something happened bad and uh, poo hit the fan, it was their job to fix it on the job. Now, the crew chief uh, got to report to uh, the operations officer. And the operations officer was the guy who was a crew chief also, but he was in charge of all the other crews also. So we had a crew chief and a tech, and then multiple crews. And one of those crews was the operations officer. And our operations officer worked for me for a very long time. Awesome. Did everything. Knew everything inside and outside. And everybody loved it. But if the crew chief had a problem, they would call the operations officer. Basically, every position is a filter to you. I don't want to be bothered because you broke a pot outside. Or you lost your pole. Or... You're behind schedule. I don't, don't tell me that. That's not my job. I don't want to know that. I don't want to hear about it. What I'm going to get at the end of the day is a report from the operations officer of what happened during the day. But I'm not going to hear about, hey, here's the problem. I'm going to ha hear about, hey, here's the solution that we came up with to this problem. And now this is where people kind of get a little bit like, oh, you're on your high horse. You can't. No, that's not it. I got enough things. I didn't put people in place 
to take care of this stuff to let that stuff come through. Like that is the minuscule things to come through to me. So my operations officer's job was to get those reports from all the other guys. And at the end of the day, I always sat down with my operations officer. If there was an issue on a crew that I had to then address, and he said, hey, crew number three uh, broke two windows today. Um, what we did was we already got those windows off to our glass company to fix them. They'll be done tomorrow. Uh, we're going to pick them up between this job and this job, and then we'll have them delivered. That's a solution. I go, oh, damn it. Okay. That sucks, but it's handled. Everything is absolutely done, right? Like, like that's his job. But now it's my job to bring the crew. Okay, cool. Uh, when we're done here, uh, let them know to come on in. So I bring the crew chief in, and I just be like, "Hey, man, what's going on?" So I heard you guys had a couple uh, issues today. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, this is what happened. You know, the drop window drop. Uh, it was a, a storm window that we just twisted. I was, you guys broke two windows. It's that's kind of a lot, right? And, oh yeah. Well, you know, on the second one. Cool. Well, um, listen, I'm not, you have to do some things to like really F, uh, F up in my eyes. Like uh, understanding that I know the problem and you know the problem, you're going to fix the problem. So cool. You're going to handle it, right? Like, you know, all right, cool. So there's just make sure you guys are just being a little bit more careful with that twisting. You know, that's going to be an issue, but we're going to pick those up. Uh, don't worry. The company's covering them. Uh, you guys are, don't have any, just make sure that if that ever happens, that, uh, you talk to the customer, make sure it's handled right away with them. Apologize profusely. Uh, you know, tell them you're taking care of it. Uh, if you need to take something off, talk to operations officer, whatever his name may be or her name, uh, talk to them and they may give you the authorization to give them money off if need be, but just make sure you guys handle it. Stuff happens. We know we work with windows and glass all day, but just kind of be careful with it. And that is kind of what I do as far as putting it out there. But then they know. But that's how things happen. It's already handled by the operations officer who already talked to the crew chief. The tech is just standing there like, oh, yeah, I messed up. But, like, crap rolls downhill, right? So that is those three positions. Now, as the operations officer, if he ever leaves, I have the most senior guy of my other operations officers kind of move into that position. Obviously, you want those people to be very happy for very long, so you're going to make them be the highest paid position, perks, benefits, whatever you can do. Freedom, because a lot of times guys you're hiring just want the freedom of that kind of job. Uh, letting them have that. Basically giving people responsibilities without making them work. Uh, you know, Not creating extra work for people, but giving them responsibilities is huge because people really like responsibilities. It, when you are operations officer and you handle everything, you're like a higher up. Like you are higher up in this company. Like... You know, obviously the seniority, but you know, you're in a position for that. And listen, guys, always hire from within. So if a tech is ever doing amazing, is doing great, kick him to crew chief if he wants to. You know, if a crew chief leaves, if you kick that crew chief and then go, always hire within. These guys are, are loyal and working with you, understand your company. You want to make sure that you keep them happy and, and, and with you for a very long time. But uh, on those same things, we had uh, pressure washing tech which was a guy who did just pressure washing, which is usually night stuff, concrete cleaning, that type of thing. He ran his own truck. Uh, it was usually uh, P-Dub Tech, so it would have been a crew chief, uh, P-Dub Tech, and then uh, P-Dub Tech by itself. Same kind of concept, depending on how you break it up. Our techs did um, window cleaning and pressure washing for the most part, unless we had to send it to that crew because it was a bigger job or specialty. And then we had a route tech. And a route tech... Uh, was just that. He was just a tech. I mean, he was technically the crew chief, but uh, he was the route guy. Um, and you could have as many of those route crews as you want, but each one has one person. And that one person took care of it. Route does not make sense to send multiple people to. There's so much drive time. If you spend 10 minutes driving every hour, right, that's 80 minutes of driving when you're done at the end of the day. That's a lot of time that now is 160 minutes for two, right? Three people's even more. Like that's a lot of wasted time you're spending. One person is fine um, with route if you have nice healthy routes, which I love route. But if you have nice healthy routes, you can uh, split it up and get people solidly working, which is really nice. It keeps those route guys happy too that they can always be working. 
Um, but those are basically how we broke it down. Now, you guys may have some other ones. If so, comment uh, on YouTube. Let me know. But then the final position that we always had hired for other than sales, sales is one of those. I don't even want to talk about it. But, yes, we had a salesman for a while. I mean, on and off, we've tried lots of them. Um, just never worked. It worked well. Our highest paid person was a salesperson. But, um, but anyway, next was our office goddess. The office goddess for me as the owner of the company, was the most valuable player on my team. That was the greatest person there was. And now, mind you, the bigger you get, the more office staff you have to have. But the office goddess, as we called her, uh, she did everything I didn't want to do. She did the billing. She did the collections. She did the stuffing of the envelopes and making sure that all the forms and everything were returned. She made sure that what we called the Bibles, which were our uh, zipper books, had everything in there, all labeled. Every book was had its calendar, everything all in sections and folders. She made sure everything was ready, everything was stuffed, and everything was ready for the next day. Not only that, but she opened the mail, took checks in. Um, she uh, get the checks out for bills, and she's everything. She just does everything. So very important position. But that is also, all these positions are freeing you up to be the one to go out there and get these people work if you're just sitting on your ass like you've failed the whole system like it is up to you you've been relieved of all these duties because you need to get people enough work to then pay for all these staff people that are on on your payroll the office goddess uh any of your office staff makes you zero dollars she never made me money she didn't clean but she did stuff that was super valuable so i had to pay her salary through what the guys did so something to think about the bigger you get you hit what's called um saturation and saturation really just means that your crew working 40 hours every single week and they're doing as much work as they possibly can do and the staff to support them is absolutely capacity you hire bring on another truck but with that hitting saturation that's when you make the most money possible and the reason is is because there are no extra bills associated with them making as much money as they possibly can when you bring in a second crew now that saturation, if they're only working five hours a week because those guys are working 40, there's a lot of bills you're paying that you could be bringing in a lot more work. They're not going to hit saturation to 40. So making sure that you kind of hire and get people in staff and not overstaffed and not understaffed is really the benefit to go. If you're doing all this, you've hired these staff, but yet you're still out there working, you're missing an opportunity. If you pay somebody, say, 12 bucks an hour to start, 15 doesn't matter, whatever the dollar amount is, Whatever you're paying that person, that's what you're making if you're doing the cleaning. And I'll explain that. Say you make 100 bucks an hour, even numbers, right? If you pay somebody $10 an hour, you're making $90 an hour. They're making $10. you are already making $90. they are making $10. Now, if you're the one doing the work, guess what? You're already making the $90. you are really only making $10 to go do that work. So don't think you're making $90 bucks because you would have made $90 before that. You're only making $10 difference. So that's why hiring staff makes a ton of sense. Now, $10 an hour does not translate to how much you're paying. Obviously, there's 38% that goes to the payroll company and then everything that goes with it. But whatever. That's staffing. Listen, if you are listening still at this point, please let me know some ideas that you want to hear. Uh, this one was uh, Sebastian really kind of, I think this is one of your ideas, actually. Uh, you sent me some, some really awesome ideas and I keep trying to pick and choose out of them. So... Thank you. Let me know. Let me order your supplies. I truly appreciate it. I want to be your rep and I want to uh, make lots of money so that I can um, eat fancier f foods, I guess. I, I got to pick new things to say. So call me, text me, 862-312-2026. And this week, if you want your 5% discount, you got to call me. You got to put your order in. It can be in your cart, just whatever. But the key word this week for your 5% discount is ABH. Always be hired. ABH. You tell me ABH and you will get 5% off just because you're awesome like that and you're a part of the nation. So thanks again for checking us out. Uh, make sure to watch, subscribe, blah, 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 all the cliche things. Thumbs up. Give us some thumbs up. I, the thumbs up are cool. I, I like to see those. So Go do that. And until next week, go and be epic.